Du har skickat sms till honom. Mysteria found it. You will now be placed in the conference. To mute your line, press star 6. Good morning, Brett. How are you? A good morning. Is this Peter? Yes, this is Peter, alive and kicking. And all our audience here at the Senior World Conference 2015. Welcome. I appreciate it. Good afternoon. It's uh, 7.50 a.m. here on a sunny Seattle day. And it's uh, great to join you guys. Thank you. And we do know that you Americans are very uh, early to work, so this is perfect. <laughs> this is great. I came in a little earlier than I normally do, but hey, it's worth it. That's okay. Indeed. I just talk uh, briefly about you and your company and your position at your company. Please introduce yourself, uh, Brett. I told them you are the vice president at Leisure Care. And, and please add that, and then we will see this video, and then we come back with some questions. But please, who are you, Brett? Oh, it's such a complex question. No. Uh, my name is Brett Robinson, as, as Petter has said, and I'm our, the uh, executive vice president with Leisure Care. And um, I tell you, you, you'll see in the video, I consider myself a pretty lucky guy. Um, I had worked for Unilever. Show of hands, how many of you out there have heard of Unilever before? Yes, they do. Uh, prob- they raise prob- their hands. Prob- prob- they do. Yeah, probably everybody, right? Yeah. Uh, that's great. And, you know, Unilever... Oh, go ahead. Yes, that, that's great. And, and I, I will, I will um, talk more about you, and, and, and we will uh, looking forward to listen to you about your experiences from Unilever, because I do know you are headhunted to this leisure care and senior business industry, and, and, and there is lots of thoughts and, and, and uh, things about that. But before we yeah. start, we will see this video of yours. So please hang up here, and we will uh, we'll come back in a uh, few minutes from now then. Yeah, that, that sounds great. So now it's showtime. Greetings to all the attendees at the Senior World Conference and a special hello to my good friend, Mr. Petter Alstrom. Petter, it's been about a year and a half or so since we met while you were here visiting leisure care in our offices and some of our communities here in Seattle. So a big warm welcome to you. I'm delighted to get a chance to spend some time with you this this afternoon to share how lucky of a guy I am because I happen to be in this great senior housing industry It's a phenomena and it's growing like crazy, not only here in the United States, but globally. And I wanted to just share a little bit uh, first of my story and how I got into this business because I I think like a lot of people kind of stumbled into it. Many of you have probably heard of Unilever. Unilever is a global consumer products company that's headquartered out of London. I had worked for Unilever for 10 or 11 years, had great career growth. I was uh, overseeing um, national accounts, some large accounts here in the United States, in the uh, uh, and a personal donor and hair care portfolio. I know that sounds exciting. It was so exciting. In fact, I needed to get out. My soul was, I felt kind of drying up marketing and selling hair care products and antiperspirant deodorant, even though our products were the most efficacious on the market. So I took some time off to think about what it was that I wanted to do. I did spend some time uh, with my uh, relatives in Norway, uh, right next to Sweden, which was uh, a great experience. But ultimately, I found myself in Denver, Colorado, working with a, a real estate developer. And this real estate development company just happened, about the time that I started, happened to get into senior housing. And I, was, and I had no experience in senior housing. And I, what drew me to them was they were building these big single family homes in the mountains and really great townhomes and condos in cities like Denver and Kansas City. But lo and behold, two or three months into my experience with the company, senior housing became, and I kid you not, my favorite part of our business. And that's in large part because of leisure care, because of their, and I'll talk about our company um, in a moment, but it was because of their passion for making a positive impact on their residents' lives. And I quickly saw not only the opportunity in the business, but more importantly than that, a, a, a business that 
really serves as ex, uh, experts and advisors to folks that are going through very emotional times trying to make decisions for their parents and their loved ones. So I'm working with this real estate development company called McKenzie House. I'm now uh, unexpectedly fully um, invested in and helping manage the sales and marketing for a couple of senior housing communities that we developed. But we happened to pick Leisure Care as our management partner. And like, as I'd mentioned, in very short order, it became my favorite part of our business. And when the downturn hit here in the United States and globally, kind of 08, 09, I found myself within probably weeks of not having a job as our, our development company went from 60 people to six. And it was at that time that Leisure Care reached out um, extended the Olive Branch uh, an opportunity for me to come work for them. I thought I would come to Seattle and help run the sales and marketing, but no. They wanted me to be, to be a general manager of one of the retirement communities that McKenzie House had in fact developed. And it was an incredible experience overseeing a staff of 85 or 90, uh, managing a, a chef and a culinary program and a nurse, and, and it gave me great operational experience. I did that for about a year, and then after that, uh, in August of 2010, my wife and I and our kids moved up to Seattle, and I've been here ever since. It has been an absolutely delightful experience to work for a company that is so passionate about making a difference in people's lives. And that's why I really want to share that and talk about Leisure Care and who we are and how we differentiate ourselves from our competitors. So how is Leisure Care different? We're different in a lot of ways. We like to think we're special, um, but there's a couple things that really differentiate us the most from our competition. And as Petter maybe has talked about, the United States, the marketplace is incredibly competitive from large publicly traded companies all the way down to small mom and pops. It's, it's relatively fragmented um, from a regional standpoint and a national standpoint. So lots of competition and you've got to stand out like any great business. We stand out in a couple of ways. From an exterior standpoint and from an advertising standpoint, we like to call it five-star fun. Our advertising, the imagery within that advertising conveys a really playful, um, fun environment where you can, where a resident, um, where folks can come and thrive and be playful and live in a hospitality-oriented community where folks are engaging in, in new friends and great food and maybe participating in activities that they haven't participated in in 10 or 15 years. So from a lifestyle standpoint, that's what makes us different. That's the energy and vibrancy you feel and hear when you enter one of our communities. Behind the scenes, I think it's fair to say what creates that from a cultural standpoint is our deeply rooted belief in making a positive impact. Who do we want to make a positive impact on? Everybody, our residents, their family members, anyone that we come in contact on a daily basis, the, the man or woman that, that works for FedEx that is delivering a package. We want to make a positive impact, and we want to have that orientation of, of positivity, and we want our folks smiling and authentically wanting to um, provide great customer service to, um, to our, our customers. Additionally, we believe, and this is really probably the core of our culture, and that's a three-thirds lifestyle. Three-thirds meaning uh, we want our employees and all of our team members to live a balanced life. The first third is family, the second third is community, and the third third is work. Now, we don't all hit that every single day. Of course, there's days where that's a little out of whack or we're working crazy hours or not. Now, hopefully, we know everyone's working hard out there. Um, but we strive to make sure that everyone in the company, both here at the home office and out in the field, is living a balanced life and gets enough time to recharge their batteries and spend time with the people that are most important, and that's their family and their friends. So those are the ways that we really promote our company. That's our lifestyle and what we pursue um, every single day. And I think in the end, between the Five Star Fund brand and that pursuit of the three-thirds lifestyle and making a positive impact, we rise head and shoulders above our, our competition, and it's the big reason why we have been in business since the mid-70s and that our best days for this company are ahead of us. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. 
Oh, this is all funky. This was great, Brett. This was very, very good. Thank you very much for that video. Are you still? Yeah, you bet. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll just ask. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> I, I will just ask the audience in Swedish uh, one thing. Hang the mirror. They, they, they understand. What, what uh, they understood everything. That's fine. <laughs> so we don't have oh, to oh, give them. Ahead. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I, I have prepared some questions for you, but before that, I will just tell you that uh, as a real estate developer guy, as me, uh, with strategy and, and, and control as my, my main topic when coming to developing uh, uh, housing for elderly, I, I, I think what you said in the middle of this presentation was so good, because I do believe in that myself, is that you can't understand this business without doing the practice yourself. You told everybody here, which have understood that, that you were headhunted from Unilever. <laughs> you were coming to this, this uh, leisure care business, and you have some thoughts and beliefs of what you are going to do. Uh, but for one year, <laughs> they send you to a place in America to become a general manager not to develop real estate, not to uh, do business or marketing as you were thought uh, you should do. Yeah. You started with the actual uh, operations because, and that's what I th think is one of your strengths, and I will take it in Swedish later, and I've done some paper on that, that this is one of your success factors because you truly know and understand the business. And that's why you also got uh, so successful when coming to all what you can say is success, uh, I think. But anyhow, everybody at Leisure Care, with one exception, as far as I know, has done this start. You have to start yeah. with operations, and I also think that's one thing which sticks you out. Is that, uh, do you share that thoughts, Brett, as a success factor? Yeah, no, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I, it, was, it was interesting because when I, can you guys hear me okay? I've got a little bit of an echo. Excuse me? Is, Take... it, is it clear? It's clear. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, it was like I said in that, that video, I was a little bit surprised because, you know, I can barely operate a lawnmower. <laughs> and I, I've always been in sales and sales and marketing, so I was excited to, to, to move to Seattle with my family and oversee the sales and marketing and they were like not so fast Brett we want you to to be a general manager and actually operate one of the communities um, because I, I don't think there's many executives in this business in any country um, that are really really good if they haven't been an operator and and the reason I say that is is this and it's not that you you couldn't be good if you have an operator community but this is what I've learned about senior housing it is a very locally focused product and you have to win locally um, and yet we've nationally and globally we've got to be able to appeal to more seniors and drive penetration rates and the only way you do that is with great people because the reality is families that are looking for their loved ones or prospects themselves, they don't really care who's in you know, your corporate headquarters, your ivory tower. What matters to them most is the, the general manager or the executive director, the leader, and the staff in that community, that, that you've got great talent there, that they're compassionate. Um, that they anticipate needs and provide great customer service and ultimately deliver on a really engaging environment that people want to call home. And if you do that, that's what we call, you know, making our positive impact and delivering on our true north. But once I became a general manager and dealt with a lot of the family problems and a crazy, you know, son-in-law and the real issues of, getting food delivered on time and, and keeping expenses at budget in the kitchen and the multiple restaurants uh, and managing a, a guest services program, it gave me ent an entirely new respect and perspective. And then being in a position now where we oversee almost 40 
communities. And, and it would be really hard to do it well if I hadn't been a general manager and had that experience. Oh, that's great. That was a good reflection. I have prepared some questions for you, Brett, and I would like to, I would like to start with the first one. Uh, I do know Leisure Care is a quite successful company and brand in the no North America. You are both established in the US and also in Canada. And I do know you have developments also in Mexico. And uh, because you are an international concept, uh, which, which can apply your, your concept locally. Then you also have got the opportunity to know lots of seniors from different cultures, different places. And could you please give me your thoughts about what's uh, combined the North American seniors with the rest of the world? What is the similarities and what is the differences between US seniors and the rest of whom you are, 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 are working with? Do you yeah, under understand the um, question? Yes. Yeah, and that, that varies. That varies by country. You know, depending on preferences and tastes, and how conservative or how liberal. And and uh, but I mean, even within the United States, for example, um, we have a new community in Utah. Yeah, the, the second one is about to open up in Utah, and our first one broke ground in. Um, back in June of last year, almost a year ago. And it's very, it's heavily influenced by Mormonism, which is a, a, a positive thing, but it is very conservative. So doing business in Utah is very different than doing business in California or Florida, for example. But when you start to open that up internationally, the differences are, are, are even greater. You know, in Mexico and in Canada, um, but what I, I would say is, I mean, we could talk about the differences, but the similarities, there's, there's so many more similarities in that uh, I, we really look at it as whether you're 20 or 40 years old or 60 years old or 89 years old, there are some inherent needs and desires. And in, in whether you're from France or Sweden or Germany or Canada, or the Hawaiian Islands in the States are similar. You know, and that is you want friends and you want to laugh and you want a nice glass of wine and a good meal and some intellectually engaging activities. Okay, maybe if you're not, you know, uh, well, yeah, you want intellectually uh, engaged activities and you want to be able to thrive. And, and, you know, I'm 46 and I want to be with my family and I want to, have a quality life. So we really look at, you know, seniors in Mexico want that same thing. That might be delivered a little differently. Um, and seniors in Canada and seniors in India are looking for those similar things. So what we try to do is look at our core values and our strengths and wrap those around, um, wrap those around the, the cultural fit in each country. And then the most important thing, I think, you know, within each country, and we talk about Northern Europe, but it's to then find an advertising agency or an agency that obviously really understands that culture and can take, yeah. you know, can take our program and our social model of, of, of uh, creating socially engaged environments and then, and then customizing it for that community or for that company, or that, co I'm sorry, country. Yeah. That sounds great. That's, um, that was a good answer, I think, for this question. Uh, I do know that uh, leisure care is uh, um, people or uh, competitors are looking at uh, leisure care as a very twisted thinking company. You're always uh, you're famous to think outside the box, to use a management word. <laughs> um, when you are looking and planning for your future service delivery, what do you see in your crystal globe, when, what to come? Could you give us some tips on a global trend, so to speak, about this delivery thing, according to seniors? Was that, there's a little bit of an echo. Are you, are, you, uh, you, are you talking about like innovation moving forward? Yes, yes. I do know you're, you're very eager in, in developing your concept and your service delivery. And I do know you're, you're, you're eager to, to to give more seniors more delivery uh, 
to get in contact and touch with your concept and you just want to understand we would like to understand what you see coming on a global arena because seniors is changing the baby yeah. boomers are, are different than the earlier ones and do they have other things which you will try to fulfill in your concept that's about what i'm trying to yeah. say yeah no that you know and our, our our concept there's a there's a lot of different business models you know we're a rental model and folks would rent an apartment from us like they would rent anywhere you know and all they have to do is give 30 day notice to move out and about 70 percent of our residents live in independent living and about 30 percent receive some sort of assisted living services but regardless of where one falls in that spectrum, we have a very strong hospitality model. And you know, for example, we don't we don't roll a medical cart uh, between tables in the dining room at dinner time like some of our competitors do. And that's not a bad thing. That's just more of a medical model. So what we look at from an innovation standpoint is how do we continue to evolve and be an even stronger hospitality have a stronger hospitality orientation and you know we have a our parent company 180 we have different companies within 180 that are not necessarily senior oriented businesses but they cater to leisure care and our retirement community so for example we have a travel company yeah. twist travel and we can we book trips and uh programs, day, daycations or staycations and week-long trips for our residents. Yeah. That is something that, you know, we, we, we have a great ratio um, as far as some of our folks that will go with yeah. residents. So we offer a great experience with travel. Our customer experience is something when you walk in the front door, we're constantly working on improving to ensure that yeah. – the sense of welcome and vibrancy and positivity the second you walk through the doors because our studies show that first those first couple of minutes when a prospect or their families come in, they're doing a lot of analyzing and a huge part of their decision is made literally in the, even out in the parking lot walking in your curb appeal and the energy they feel. So that is an area that we focus on a lot you know, food, 50% of all complaints in this business are oriented around food. Because if we think about our aging parents or our grandparents, how much do they talk about their next meal? <laughs> and when you're eating in the same restaurant every single day, so, you know, we're, we're, we're evolving our food program um, so that food is healthier, that there's a wider variety of, of ethnic foods from around the world because people are, are better traveled than they were 10 or 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, Americans always need to work on portion sizes. <laughs> I so right. we're, we're working on appropriate, more appropriate portion sizes. So food is a big part of that advancement. And the last thing I'd say is technology. These new communities that we're opening, I just had mentioned to in Utah, they're called TRIOs. T-R-E-E-O, um, the tagline for TRIO is a smart, modern, and connected. And each resident, when they move in, they get an iPad, and we've created our own app um, that serves as a digital concierge. So if they want to find out what's going on um, for the excursions, you know, different trips over the weekend, or they want to see what the, the, the special is for dinner, or what movies they're playing tomorrow night, they can do all of that on, on their iPad. And, and uh, the next thing we're looking at, um, are you guys familiar with, you know, these wearable devices like Fitbits? I don't, yes, we do. They're, I do. You know, you, you, they're, they're kind of like digital uh, pedometers, and, you know, they track how many steps you've taken and how many calories you've burned. and. Yeah they Bluetooth into a, a device or your computer and you can really track health. So we're looking at some of this advancement in technology with, with wearable devices and tying that in to PrimeFit, which, which is our exercise program. So those are some of the areas that we're looking at to innovate. 
Uh, that sounds great. Thank you very much. My, my two very last questions, and I, I do hope you can give me just uh, in a sentence. The first thing, which should be a seminar of its own. There is something going on in Europe. This is a coming market, I will say. How do you Americans from Seattle look upon Europe and what's going on here as far as, as, well as you are about that? Please give me your, your answer, short one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, uh, very positively. I mean, we've, you know, it's interesting. You look at India and the growth in seniors, and you look at Mexico and the growth in seniors. It's happening in China. The same thing is happening in Europe. And, and Northern Europe, there's such a high number of prospects. And like we've talked about, Petter, I mean, the, 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 the need that is there for high quality, and high quality doesn't always mean expensive. There's such an opportunity for mid-price models, yeah. um, not just high-price models. But the need is there. I think the most important thing, my advice would be, again, is to find a great advertising agency or firm who understands the cultural fit, and then for folks out there that are looking to get into the business, to probably start with the smallest development possible that still makes sense financially and you know, not to get greedy, because we've seen so many people here in the States just new to the business and build you know, 250, 300, 400 unit communities, and, it's just, it's just, and that's more challenging. Yeah. So to start small and allow the market, the market to assimilate and build some desire for the product. And then once you've got that brand built, then grow. Um, but it, we just think it's a, it's a beautiful market across many of the European countries. That sounds great. We are so eager to just get started after this call. The final question, and you are a marketing guy, I know. If you could give me a one-liner about your, your personal shoes of senior living when it will be time for that in the future. What should you tell us? What's your dream uh, community when coming to this? And you can't just say tree or leisure care model. You have to expand that. Please. So you, you're asking what, just personally what, you know, my, what my one-liner is? Yes, uh, you can take two-liners sure. too, but uh, we want to understand what you are looking on in your coming senior living in the future? Um, that's a good question. I, I think what's, what's not going to change is that great talent is, is the only really indicator of, of future performance. And I would just, I would just um, really make the point to everyone and, and that not not to be cliche or too general with that but the communities that do well and are fully occupied that make a positive impact and have you know blitheringly happy residents and these make these they create these beautiful environments and that are also extremely profitable the, the thing that is consistent is there is an incredible leader in that community a great general manager that knows that is not only a great talent themselves he or she, but that they know how to hire great talent, and that alleviates about 90% of your of your problems and your, your issues and builds a very successful business. And that's the thing that will just never change, and I don't care what country it is, yeah. and whether it's 50 years from now or today or how technologically advanced we are, you have to have a great general manager. It comes down to that one person. So never forget that when you're building your plan and making this higher. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much for that answer. And for all the audience, finally, I will just say that Brett uh, and, and, and Bob and Jude and all the others at Leisure Care also have figured this personal issue uh, out. They have started a university to educate their own personal staff and also others. And since this month, there is a special agreement between the University College of Chalmers and Leisure Care University in Seattle. So we will have the opportunity to send two people over for a scholarship for two weeks' time this summer, just to make the experience themselves. And that's just one thing. And the other thing, next year, Brett, I would like to welcome you here, alive and kicking on stage on the Senior World Conference 2016. 
Thank you very much for your time and that you participate this live. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Have a great conference. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. All for now. Have a great day in Seattle. Bye-bye. Då så. Ja, it worked. I'm deeply impressed. Ja, det var väl yes. bra. Hängde ni med där? Jag tror ni gjorde det. Och jag kan gärna stå till tjänst sen med någon annan analys. Eller min analys om det här. Men det här var väl bra. Jag var rädd att det skulle vara har som fått kommit ut. NASA Space Center Talk to the Moon. Men, men det, var, det var hörbart. Och så när man kör i publik tv då kan man säga det finns andra koncept också. Det här är ett jättebra koncept men det finns andra jättebra koncept. Men vill ha en lite ingångar där så säg till. Nu är det ingång eller utgång till utställningshallen här. Och nu är det tänkt att Lenny Norman ska få underhålla oss med lite bubbel i handen. För det har ni verkligen gjort er förtjänta av. Det har varit en jättebra dag om jag får säga det själv så so far. Jag hoppas att vi ser resultatet om bit, beroende på många som är här. Men egentligen får man ingen ursäkt att inte komma. Så att vi syns här imorgon bitte klockan kvart i nio. Och dessförinnan så har vi ju matsalen och underhållningen att se fram emot. Stort tack för att ni har varit med här idag. Tack. Och de som har tänkt att de skulle...